What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman with just over 48 hours passed since the release of the very first Morbius trailer and with the dust just beginning to settle from the revelation that this movie is indeed in the MCU, fans have begun to theorize that Sony may be further down the track to starting the Sinister Six than a lot of us think and in fact there's already enough members between the two universes to fill out an entire team but with one small caveat in that we're missing a key founding member depending on which iteration of the team they choose to go with and now those same fans have theorized that not only did we see that founding member in the trailer but that Dr. Octopus will be making his debut during the Morbius film and the truth is given what Sony has always chosen to do with their Spider-Man property there's actually a lot of precedence for this we're going to break down exactly what the Easter egg is what fans are saying and just who may be playing Dr. Octopus but first if you could grab the subscribe button we're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros as well as a whole slew of other Marvel related stuff including a limited limited edition Infinity Saga box set, all you have to do to be entered to win hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now first things first, there are so many threads that tie into this theory, some of my own making, that it's hard to know where to begin, so let's start with the facts. When Tom Holland finally shows up in a Sony produced, directed, and distributed Spider-Man film, that will be the studio's third attempt at a live-action Spider-Man in just two decades. And while no other film studio in the right mind would even reboot the franchise twice in that same amount of time, with Spider-Man's popularity worldwide and with the profitability of that IP in Sony's entertainment sector, they have no choice but to do so. And with the purchase power and prowess Tom Holland is going to bring over from the MCU, they can't afford to screw this up. But we learned a thing or two about Sony along the way while they took their first two cracks at making a live-action Spider-Man. Man, and unfortunately, they set a precedent when it comes to Spider-Man IP by shoehorning way too many characters into the narrative and not focusing on the important characteristics of each character's arc to build those characters out. And that leads us directly into our theory today that Dr. Octopus is not only in Morbius, but also in the trailer and right at the beginning because, well, Sony can't help themselves in the form of Jared Harris's character clearly wearing a lab coat there in the flashback acting as a mentor towards Michael Morbius, and later in the trailer, he will admonish him against scientific ambition when Morbius asks out loud how far they're allowed to go in order to fix something that's broken. He responds, not to the point where the cure is worse than the disease. That definitely sounds like Otto Octavius, the ends justifying the means and the right character themes for that character. But look, just wearing a lab coat, being a mentor and saying the right things doesn't make you Otto Octavius, but Sony is being super, super secretive about whom Harris is playing, leaving us all to believe that his character is a major spoiler. And if he should already be a mentor towards Michael Morbius, then that will possibly open up the door to his recruitment to the Sinister Six team. Now, the reason this is all important is obviously the cameo by Michael Keaton's Adrian Toomes, the Vulture, whom last we saw was speaking directly to another member of the Sinister Six, Matt Gorgon the Scorpion. If you add in some of the other characters we had along the way, you actually already have enough members for the Sinister Sinister Six. Assuming Mysterio's not dead, that's three right there. Plus, there's still a version of the Shocker in the MCU. And while it's very unlikely he would join the team, if you added Venom and Morbius to those four right there, you'd have six members. Dropping Shocker allows for one more person to join, whom better than Otto Octavius, Dr. Octopus, the founding member of the original Sinister Six team in the comics. And while the iteration of the team and the roster would look much different from that team, you'd at least have the comic book continuity of having Dr. Octopus found it. And that's where we find ourselves full circle to where the argument started about what Sony has done in the past, the things they've gotten wrong about Spider-Man, and also their need to shoehorn characters in look i thought the Otto octavius in sam Raimi spider-man 2 famously portrayed by alfred molina was an absolute classic and i actually have a strong affinity for sam Raimi spider-man 1 and 2 but you can't argue by the third one in much of the second trilogy they didn't have any idea what they were doing peter parker didn't quite feel like peter parker in any of those movies and if you look at the ps4 game and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Sony doesn't know how to make a Spider-Man story without killing Uncle Ben and using Dr. Octopus. That's why I would be really shocked 
pun intended, if they didn't use Dr. Octopus at least right soon in one of these franchise movies to introduce them. Another thing Sony has set a precedent for is not taking their time with characters doing the right things. I've mentioned this earlier in the video, but think about it. If you were Sony and you finally got your hands on Spider-Man, would you be patient and do it right? Or would you do what Sony has always done and rush directly to what you think will make the most money? That's why it wouldn't surprise me at all if they went ahead and put Dr. Octopus in this movie or if they spent major scene time trying to build out the Sinister Six, telling us way more than we need to know about a movie or a crossover that should be coming way down the road, but will probably end up being Spider-Man's first Sony movie, Sinister Six, because again, Sony can't help themselves. Now look, to listen to me talk about Sony and Spider-Man for the last two and a half minutes, it would make you think I think it's a bad idea they're inheriting the franchise, and I don't. In fact, I've been on record the last week and a half as saying this is actually probably a good thing. Marvel Studios only has so many bandwidth. There's a ton of classic and modern stories they still have to tell, and by the time Tom Holland's done in the MCU, he will have been in seven, eight, or even nine movies. At that point, it's a good time for him to transfer and give where his IP is already at home a good chance to keep building on his story. It means we can keep getting Spider-Man movies when maybe that franchise would not have room in Marvel's phases five, six, seven, eight. The only problem being what Sony has done in the past in the press they set up gives me worry for how this franchise will be handled and I'm not sure how many movies Tom Holland's Peter Parker can last in if the movies aren't to the quality of the MCU and one final thought if there was any doubt in your mind that Sony doesn't know how to keep recycling old things why was an image of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man costume used as graffiti on the wall in the background of this shot I know a lot of people have talked about it as homage to their old Spider-Verse and if but Sony Come on, it's the exact same graphic copy-pasted from your PS4 Sam Raimi outfit from the game you put out last year, which tells me one of two things. Either A, they're so stuck in nostalgia and the way that they've done things that it only furthers my argument that they don't know how to do Spider-Man without recycling the same old tropes, or B, they screwed up and put that costume in there when they meant to use the one from Homecoming. Oh, it's a blue and red costume. They won't be able to tell the difference except for the fact that every Spider-Man fan can tell the difference between every costume. That's why we're Spider-Man fans. I don't know exactly what the point here was for Sony, but it's just another detail, something they didn't get exactly right. Not that they meant to leave it ambiguous, but you could have easily used any other Spider-Man costume from something that wasn't your old Sam Raimi franchise the way that you've always done in the past. And Sony, dare I say it, Venom was good, but it wasn't great. And a lot of people actually didn't like the film. I'm not sure how many mediocre or okay films Tom Holland's MCU Peter Parker will last in. It'll only last for so long before they sour that and eventually that franchise dies. Spider-Man or not, they have to continue to put out quality films that follow the same Tom Holland's arc and that deliver the same sort of quality that we're used to or it's just going to feel too much like a different thing and fans aren't going to buy in. Guys, let me know what you have to say in the comments about all of this. Number one, do you believe in Sony to break this recycling pattern that they've set up? Or are you with me in the fact that they sort of have a hard time telling a different Spider-Man story than here's Uncle Ben, here's Dr. Octopus, and B, would you be mad if they did start building out the Sinister Six almost immediately in this very first Morbius film, jumping the gun, and then the very first Spider-Man film we see inside Sony? is Sinister Six. You know that's what's going to happen. Let me know in the comments what you think about it and quickly let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. We're still giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 600,000 subscriber mark. We just gave one away at the 550 mark and two away at the 500,000 mark. If you missed either winner, all you have to do is scroll back through the channel and look for them in the titles. If you want to be entered to win, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video, and that'll automatically enter you to win the PlayStations and the rest of the prizes we're giving away here at the channel, like the limited edition Infinity Saga box set. These were sold out on pre-order limited to only 4,000. When people got them, they jacked up the prices to ridiculous amounts on eBay. We gave away one on New Year's Eve Eve. She's already received it. Congratulations to Jessica A. We're going to give out the second one in a couple of months. If you want to be entered to win this, either of the PlayStations or any of the future prizes we give away here at the channel, all the same rules apply. 
hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell with notifications turned on, leave a like and a comment on this video, and because it's truly random, the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos, and like I said, if you've missed any of the previous winners for any of the prizes, all you have to do, scroll back through the channel, look at the titles of each video, it'll always say the subscriber mark in the winner for that subscriber mark, click on the video and scroll to the end, they're all announced there. My name's Michael Roman. This is Everything Always. Guys, thanks for checking out the channel and stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.